Hi, I'm Anton from Anton's Mindstorms and today I have an exciting video. Um, I made this cyborg chicken. It's a chicken with a cyborg eye over its uh, eyes, just like uh, the Borg in uh, Star Trek. Um, however, this chicken is a um, spike chicken model and um, it uses the cyborg implements to read extra sensors. And this is super cool because um, recently uh, Stefan and I created a system to program all of this with block code. So um, the Spike Hub runs blocks, uh, Pybrix blocks, and the LS, uh, ESP32 runs blocks, micro blocks. And that makes it really easy to connect any sensor to your Spike Hub. What's cool is that I have a whole bunch of sensors, um, Arduino sensors, that I wasn't able to use anymore up until now, because the microblocks version that runs onto this ESP32 has got libraries for almost any sensors there. So um, let's uh, see what the chicken does and then dive into the block code for the cyborg chicken. <clears throat> okay, the cyber chicken here, it can recognize gestures. Um, so if I swipe the card in front of it, it will follow the card and it will follow it from top to bottom and from bottom to top. And when it sees a color, it starts uh, walking. So I let it trigger here by seeing the color red and it's pretty trigger happy. So um, it sees red quite quickly. And now let's try it again with a real red card. So yeah, okay, there it goes. So it recognizes red, but there is some fall false positives in the code which we'll see later um, I just did it for uh, simplicity now let's do some more tracking oh apparently it saw some red in the roof again <laughs> um, so the code here uh, runs pie bricks mainly and then there is block code on the ESP32 um, the code is uh, always on board, so I can turn off the whole thing and then um, turn it on again. And then the, the block code will automatically power on and run. So as soon as the hub powers on, it makes connection with the board and then um, it gets power. So the red power LED turns on here and then I can run the Pybrix program, which will start communicating with the LMS ESP32 board and recognize these gestures. Now, um, there is a lot of sensors that I have here. Those are all of them. And most of them have libraries in um, in Microbox. So let's have a quick look at Microbox and all the libraries. Let's first have a look at the programming of the LMS ESP32. Um, this is the code made in microblocks. Uh, let's connect uh, through USB. You can also connect over Bluetooth. Um, it's up to you. So here is my uh, ESP32. It's connected via wire. It uh, shows the name of the board and um, then I can run the program. You see these yellow boxes around active code. Um, running the program overrides whatever was written on the board. And now I can see that if I do a gesture, you can see left or right, because I added this uh, say block here um, that uh, kicks in when there is a gesture available. Um, this block here is, um, a startup and a main loop to start up communication to the spike hub. Um, so the library we created is called MicroPub and a MicroPub here, I'm going to open it in the sidebar. It needs an init uh, to start it up, to start communications with the spike hub and then you add commands to it much like uh, 
regular um, uh, puppy mode that we did for Python and uh, you can just define these my blocks so I created three my, my blocks here color jest and prox and um, I add them as commands to be called from the uh, spike hub so I declaring here that uh, jest or is it's short for gesture is a um, um, my block that sends one uh, byte to the hub and wants to receive one byte from the hub basically it sends a number between one and four depending on which gesture it has seen and then it uh, asks the hub whether it should erase that gesture and look for a new one uh, so you can send a zero or one now let's go to Pybricks to look at how this works from the Pybrix side. Here also we um, import micropub and uh, the init add command and call and then as soon as the program start we add the commands with um, it looks very similar just prox color just prox color one 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 zero three zero one one I, I could also add zero zero so then it looks so you actually make it look exactly the same and we declare that the LMS ESP here is connected to port C and um, once I define this I can then call the, the gesture um, uh, command on the um, LMS ESP32 here and I call it with a parameter of zero so do not erase then I do something with it and then I call it again with a one which means erase the last uh, gesture so this is um, so you, you can create blocks here and then uh, call them from Pybricks there if you just um, tell the whole system whether how many numbers you need to and from the hub uh, so apart from gesture I defined proximity which sends one byte to the hub B is a byte H is a half int and and the other option I is a complete integer which uh, has numbers up to 30 million or something uh, you probably never need that so for me byte is good um, which is minus 127 up to 127 something and then half is a half int it, I think it's minus 16,000 up to 16,000 something and uh, and I, I almost never use that but it's for really large numbers so you the thing is you can only send numbers across that's a bit of the limitation of the system no strings and all but still it works pretty well for most centers um, and uh, you can also send multiple numbers so if you format your numbers as a list here this means uh, I can send three numbers this uh, corresponds here with the number three so on the um, Pybrick side um, the color command I can uh, read it here I'm reading it every 400 milliseconds because otherwise it interferes with the gestures and um, I just call the color and then it gets me a list and then I compare the items from the list so if the first item the red color is bigger than the green and the red color is bigger than the blue I'm assuming it sees red this is not really solid because I should also check for the red value being above a certain number because um, when the, the, the red is almost equal uh, this gives us false positives um, anyway it, it works more or less for now and then, um, then there is some um, uh, my blocks Pybrix my blocks here that just a sequence some motor movements to set the body to neutral or uh, walk a few steps so um, this shows the system that with only um, blocks uh, blocks on the LMS ESP side and blocks on the uh, Pybrick side you can create very interesting robots and you have a whole 
library of sensors at your disposal. So let's have a look here at the libraries that are included in microblocks. Um, there is a whole list, uh, pressure, color, distance, a few distance sensors, especially the these are very interesting. Um, they don't all have um, MicroPython libraries, but they do have microblocks libraries. And then uh, there is light, motion, particles, RFIT, uh, sensors, temperature, humidity. And there is also touch and touchscreen sensors. So that's something for a next video, because uh, microblocks micro can also power displays and you can um, open up a whole <laughs> new, uh, array of new possibilities for your PyBricks hub by showing things on interactive displays with buttons. Thanks for watching. You can find the Cyber Chicken building instructions on my website and also more information about uh, the blocks and the libraries, uh, detailed how-to instructions, everything's on my blog and I'll put the links in the description. Um, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.